For three months now, a crucial state task force examining Utah's troubled charter schools met in secret nearly a dozen times. First Amendment attorneys were stunned, and our education unit, Beyond the Books, wanted to see if the task force broke the law when it met. Chris Jones on this one for us. Well, guys, legal opinions vary on if this task force could legally meet under the cloak of secrecy. But for those who fight for transparency, they say the task force leaders should have opted for openness. Board member Lear. State school board member Carol Lear. I think it is so unfortunate. Is not mincing words. That there was not the opportunity for the public to hear this discussion. She is not happy at meetings of a task force set up to look at problems plaguing the $400 million charter school system were all closed to the public. I personally will never again support a task force that's not open to the public to some degree. In a basement meeting room, 30 of the most influential people in the charter school industry, many of whom make money off of it, met nine times, more than 27 hours of discussion, and none of it in front of taxpayers. The public should be allowed to observe that process and participate in it. First Amendment attorney Jeff Hunt says it looks like the task force may have violated code 52-4-101, the Open and Public Meetings Act. So everything that you've heard about this task force and how they operated and what they looked at makes you think that they probably broke the open meetings law in the state. It, it seems uh, inconsistent with the Open Meetings Act. What's the point of closing a meeting like this? Mark Huntsman was the chairman of the task force. He insisted the meetings be held in private and that everyone who attended was asked to adhere to a non-disclosure agreement. And Huntsman also refused to release the names of the people on the board until all the meetings had been held. Isn't, isn't light the best disinfectant? If you want to invite everyone's opinion that's non-guarded, um, it's, a it's a really good environment because they can speak from experience and speak without any kind of retribution that might, retribution from that might come from uh, their peers. This all comes at a time when Utah charter schools are in crisis. The American International School of Utah was shuttered just last year after investigators discovered the school mishandled hundreds of thousands of dollars in federal money. In December, the executive director of the Utah Military Academy resigned after allegations of fraud, forgery, and bribery. And earlier this month, Beyond the Books reported that the American Preparatory Academy is currently undergoing an audit of how it spends state and federal money. And at least three other schools, all charters, are on the verge of closure because of plunging enrollment. So Beyond the Books decided to dig a little deeper. We demanded all of the notes from those private meetings and what we found is not only did they not answer all of our questions, we also learned we weren't the only ones who had questions about transparency. At the very first meeting, State Senator Kathleen Reby questioned whether the closed-door meetings violated the Open Meetings Act. It appears she was overruled. And according to the minutes, the task force moderator, Juliana Christie, reminded participants in the room that, quote, what is said here stays here. It was a good process. According to Huntsman, the attorney general's office told him that since the task force was only making suggestions to lawmakers and not setting policy, that closed meetings were legal. He also stands by the assertion that this secret process is the best way to make Utah charter schools more accountable and more transparent. This is, this is a group that's rolling up their sleeves and going to work and, and putting everything on the table that's, that's not guarded. I would make the argument that these are all big boys and big girls. If they can't speak candidly in an open meeting, maybe they shouldn't even be on the task force. Well, we have a difference of opinion. Okay, <laughs> okay, fair enough. Now, here is the irony of all of this. Most of the people who watched this thought that the task force would tackle a big issue of who has oversight of charter schools, but the task force didn't come up with a single recommendation for that. So tune in tomorrow, and we're going to take a look at why that happened and who was behind it. Also, if you have an education story that you think we should investigate, this is our information on the screen. Give us a call. We'd love to look into it for you guys. More to come. More to come tomorrow. All right, Chris. Thank you very much. Uh